Everyone loves an underdog, yet far too often those stories never reach fruition. Defeat after defeat can weigh even the best competitors down, but that isn't the case for Boaster, the upstart leader who has taken his orgless team to the upper echelons of the European Valorant scene. And you have to go back to his Counter-Strike roots to see where he found his battler spirit. Boaster has been around the block in more than his fair share of esports. He began his career in Counter-Strike before his 20th birthday, competing in B-tier tournaments across the UK. The then young talent found a promising start in his second outing. Boaster competed with Sex at Multiplay Insomnia in December of 2015. The campaign would be a predictive microcosm for his career. Boaster is going to take that kill there, but... Jake kind of had to peek it. Sex faltered early and had to battle extra hard to get through the lower bracket and into the grand final. 55 other teams were behind them in the bracket. The last team in their way was Kaz. Surreal's going to take one and Boast is going to close out the round. Very quick round from the CTs. That's going to take it to match point. And after an epic grand final, Boaster's team won three maps to two. Six has to pull off a one versus five. He's already got one. There's the second. He's looking for a 30 oh! get it, the running headshot from Boaster. He's going to seal it up, and Sex are your champions of I-56. Boaster went on to leave Sex, which began a frequent cycle of swapping teams in the following years. At the next multiplayer LAN year, he appeared in the jersey he had defeated in the last grand final, Kaz. Old rivals became fast friends. When I'm up on the stage in the final, probably the first thing that goes into my head is, where's the camera and which camera's on? I, I like to play towards the audience, I'm not going to lie. Boaster became a part of Kaz Esports alongside Jacob. Despite not reaching the same highs as the previous year, Boaster and Jacob would stay together, joining XL in 2017. Here, Boaster would find his new home for the coming years, even if Counter-Strike wasn't. I feel like my time can be spent grinding CS, uh, learning how to create better vlogs, learning how to make videos, learning uh, uh, team dynamics like because I'm behind their team so it's nice to see it's quite a cool perspective seeing how in other games teams kind of practice slightly different to CSGO actually so that's quite cool uh, maybe I could cover that oh man's making content his final competitive counter-strike series was in 2018 but his expressive authentic way of seeing through the camera made him a fan favorite He spent the following years as a streamer under the XL brand, as well as their substitute mid for their newly franchised League of Legends team. It was the start of his career as an eSports polymath. Boaster climbed the EU ladder, making sure he would be ready if he was ever called on to help the XL squad. But his time as an FPS athlete was far from over. <sighs> hey, Control. So, about the package... What better booster for Boaster than a new title with a new meta which made use of his Counter-Strike skills and the ability combos he'd been mastering in LoL. It wasn't long before he found himself competing in an Invitational before the game had even fully released. Playing with the team Absolute Legends, Boaster secured victory in his first ever Valorant tournament. But he was hungry for more, so Boaster plucked players from wherever he could find them, pro scene or not, even from battle royales, to trial for a brand new team. And just like that, Summon FC was born, with Boaster as the in-game leader. Bringing together British players that Boaster had both played with and against throughout his career, his brand new team looked to shake the foundations of European Valorant and come knocking at the door of all the big orgs. Boaster saw this as his chance to rise with the new game, be creative, and shape the meta. And he would have his first shot during the Valorant Contenders Cup, where the seeds of a rivalry would be planted. Go down instantly, only two more players to find, but how do they try and get the defuse on go? Because Boaster has a phantom to play with, and where's the cover? Why did Zipan jump on it? Summon was able to parade through the upper bracket, looking unstoppable until they came up against FPX in the final round. Puts down one of his Shadow Orbs, wants to play off the side of it. Will they expect him? Oh! Two of them. Boaster's boys were caught off guard, losing in two straight maps. Nonetheless, the team's first outings were a success, and they would go on to challenge the best in Europe. As a riot-organized event, the first strike tournament in December of 2020 was a big deal. 
After easing their way into the main event, Summon took down Purple Cobras and advanced to the semi-finals for a rematch against Angel's Fun Plus Phoenix. And in through Bat's room, and now they're splitting in a TP. Booster in with two. No idea what he's about to do to them. Zipan walks forward, sees oh. Nova, but gets shot in the head, and Shao, the last alive, spotted a 1v3 to win, and Summon FC, they may just have booked their spot in the grand finals. Summon FC upset FPX. Summon took revenge on FPX in a three-map thriller, advancing to the first strike finals. Beating their previously insurmountable foe showed growth, and there's nothing the big orgs like more than growth. As for like what happens after this event, we got to the finals, so like who knows? Like we we must be looking pretty like a delicious dish or something, you know. But before the offers could come in, Summon had a tough fight ahead of them against another underdog, Team Heretics. Coming off of victories against tournament favourites Team Liquid and G2, Heretics were quite a mountain for Summon to climb, and that mountain quickly turned into Everest after the first map. The team's characteristic warm-up period resulted in a disaster in which they were able to only win one round. They're all going in and they're all dying for it. Rotations are coming around, the Jets on the flank. They are being cornered and they are being back. Handed. This was a welcome to the grand finals, ladies and gents. This is not going to be nice. There is no pleasantries here. But Boaster was far from out. Backs against the wall, he and his team rallied, taking the second map on Icebox and showing signs of life. It's a push forward, yeah. There we go, Boaster again. Oh. It's always Boaster. He gets him in this one, but Niso instantly yeah. trades it back. Quick little thing. He's defusing. Oh, they couldn't get him off it. Mystic did the dirty to him. Just like that, it was a real series. The teams fought tooth and nail with the event coming to a close in a closely contested fourth map. On to Lamps, the Molly's down oh, buying no. so much slime. Nuki finds Doma. Heretics draw first blood on the retake. It's just three alive. That's all that stands between summon and defeat. And victory for Heretics. Oh, Jack and Booster in combination. Oh, no. oh Niso turns it around. It's all on Mystic. A 1v3. It falls to pieces. Heretics, the Titan Slayers. Heretics took top honours, but with a second place finish in such a major tournament, Boaster and his squad had reached highs that he had only dreamed of. In less than one year, he had achieved more in Valorant than he ever had in CS. And he was far from done. 2021. The new year brought new tournaments, the first being the Red Bull home grounds that brought together top teams like G2, NIP and Liquid. Of all the Orgless rosters, Boaster & Co were the only ones to escape the first round of the event, taking down Monkey Business in a decisive 2-0 win. But that might not even be possible, Dover Last and Chak. They're trying to make it all work in their favour. Chak continues to face. He gets himself the first, puts it into a 1v1, forces him into his hand, Attackers and Tavik win. goes down, Who's and so do Monkey Business's chances. But the following match would not be as easy. Summon faced Scream's behemoth, Team Liquid, coming off a disappointing defeat at first strike, and they wanted nothing more than to bounce back. Boaster's boys opened with a 13-5 map win, as they uncharacteristically came out of the blocks hot. But the series would go tit for tat until it all came down to a fifth map, Ascent. With a series so close, fans anticipated a banger. But whether it was from fatigue or outplay, Summon fell at the last hurdle. Mystic, I think, has just been spotted as well. Nice headshot onto Soulcast for sure, but he's now got to deal with Scream. The Money the Man headshot is, is delivered. Liquid make it to the grand final, and Summon are eliminated. With the loss, Summon took third in the Invitational, but the defeat was followed by another period of growth. Boaster was to make sure that the energy for tough battles could always be summoned, and it's perhaps this growth, rather than pure results, that gave them long-term appeal. Come on, let's go! European powerhouse Fnatic dove into the Valorant scene headfirst, trusting Boaster and co to navigate the bumpy terrain of future Earth. Protect our motherland. Rico. The partnership started just in time for the Valorant Champions Tour in February, where the re-energized squad would fly their new banner in the open qualifier. There was just one problem. The European event consisted of a much criticized single elimination format, which didn't play nicely with Boaster's boys and their slow to warm play style. The next weeks of open qualifiers involved household names like FPX, Liquid and more, 
And while Fnatic have competed at every Challenger's main event, they have yet to achieve the same highs they reached free from the shackles of organisational constraints as they failed to qualify for VCT's first Masters event. Needing warm-up time was Boaster's Achilles' heel, and single elimination was the arrow. Down and Brimstone about to further extend the advantage with perfect timing on the push through. He catches Mystic in the back and Mo has to ace this round. It's not going to happen. Batty 3Ks it up and 14 to 12. Ballista have knocked Fnatic out. The European tournament runs in contrast to the North American version, which allows teams a run through the lower bracket before they're out for good. But Boaster is familiar with having to battle for his place at the table. For Fnatic and Valorant, the warm-up needs to be over, because it's just about do or die. He'll have his chance soon, with the second stage of the VCT beginning soon. With it will come the first ever international tournament for the new game, sure to attract viewers as NA squares up against Europe for the first time. Boaster's sole focus will be to book that ticket to Reykjavik and be the one leading the European charge as they look to stamp their authority on home soil. He and his hand-picked squad will have to make rapid improvement, but that's Boaster's speciality. What do you think of Boaster's robust career? Do you think his storied career is the perfect fit for a leader? Let us know in the comments down below, and as always, like the video and subscribe to Deserto for more Valorant content.